This just in, Peyton Manning's still throwing touchdowns in Denver. And so is everyone else. We're going to recap everything coming up next on the Lake Orion Fantasy Football Show. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for, for joining us. I'm Chris. And I'm Chris also. And this is Chris. Yeah. We got a great show for you today. We're going to be uh, recapping last week's week one fantasy football. We're going to go over some matchups, some sleepers and creepers. Mm -hmm. We're going through it all. All so of it. Let's start off by going over week one. Let's see, let's see what happened on, in, in week one. Yeah, what happened, Chris? Oh, we had, a, we had a good matchup. We had the J2 jaw droppers against the commissioner and the E3 executioners. Uh, heavy matchup. I'm going I'm to let you know right now. Joel had Peyton Manning. Oh, he won. Did any did anyone lose when they had Peyton Manning this week? You know what? Unless the rest of their team was injured, I'm pretty sure they won. Yeah. So so let me just just go go by saying this: Peyton Manning dropped 60 on me. Denarius Thomas 28. I mean his 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 squad had a full boat. He went all in. My let me tell you this: my my keepers, two guys I select from last year: C.J. Spiller, Calvin Johnson. A total of six points. Not going to win any matchups like that. I don't know how that could even happen. I know I had Calvin on my team. I was pretty let down by that. But, you know, the guy that lost, E3 Executioners, had Michael Vick. He had a really good game, but the rest of his team didn't produce. And when you're playing against Peyton Manning, can't win. That's right. That's right. So, so good job, Joel. You, you beat me. You beat the commish. I'm going to let it slide. On to the next matchup. Hand dogs. Touchdown, my, and the, uh, the, the Polish hammer. The Polish hammer Did, yeah. didn't come out too good, did it? No, it didn't. The Polish hammer, ironically, was the one that got hammered in this matchup. Uh, he had Matt Ryan, good quarterback, Darren McFadden, Darren Sproles. Some pretty good things there, but when you look at A lot of single has, digits. Yeah, he has a lot of single digits. You have, you have, you know, Marshawn Lynch, Kyle Rudolph, Chris Ivory, all players that you would expect to produce. Just didn't do it this week. Gave him 88. My man Hanning, Tom Brady, Shady McCoy with 24 on Monday mm -hmm. night. Brandon Marshall, old man Larry Fitz. Hit a team. He delivered 144 points. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on to the next game. On to the He's next one. He's 1-0. The next one. All right. AP for free plus RG3. This guy inherited Adrian Peterson and Doug Martin. So he had a, he had a free ride. Get a free ride going into this, Mr. Steve. You know who you are. He went up against Rice Rice Brady with no Tom Brady. With no Cam, Tom Brady. Cam Newton, Jamal Charles, he Ray Rice. He did have Rice. Ray Rice. Yes. But Ray Rice wasn't necessarily Ray Rice because he was splitting a lot of carries in that game. That's right. That's right. His tight end, he had Jimmy Graham last year. Decided not to keep him. Zach Sudfield, zero, zero spot. Mm. So this one... I mean, you look at it right now. Look at that. 28, 28, 10, 16. Oh, and Daniels, 18. Are you kidding me? He survived with one point from Mike Wallace. But he did get bailed out by Andrew Luck and Adrian Peterson, pretty much scoring every point. That's right, yeah. Andrew Luck was a good, good pickup for him. Three total touchdowns. Truth. Good win. Good first week win. Yeah. On, on to the next one. Uh-oh, this one was ugly. Ooh. The fan favorite, 50 shades a day, combined 79 points. Again, Peyton Manning threw 60. Peyton Manning had 60 points, let alone. I mean, David Wilson, I think, was his third, fourth round draft pick, negative three, fumble, lightest. And Lamar I mean, Miller, nothing, zero spots. And then you look at G's terror squad, Aaron Rodgers, pick up in the fourth round, delivering 30 points. His keeper, A.J. Green, good job keeping A.J. Green, big G. 30, I'm sorry, 28 points. Vernon Davis, I had him on my creepers last week. Yeah. Had him on my creepers. I'm the creepers. He catches two touchdowns, almost 100 yards, 21 total points. G, you put the squad together. It's the terror squad. They're going to cause terror all year. Good luck to you on, on that. And then uh, the final matchup, the final matchup of the week, we had the defending champ, Matthew Ronan versus... The man from down south, Richard Merriman, Maz Venus. Mm. Pretty fair matchup. I mean, you look at you look at Rich's Maz Venus team. 
Start of Brandon Pettigrew, Fumbalaiski, minus two there. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at the names on there, just based on, regardless of how they performed, you would think it's an even matchup, but it, the Hammers just got blown out of the water. I mean, Drew Brees, always going to be solid. But then you have Reggie Bush performing huge, Victor Cruz coming up huge. And one, one of those Victor Cruz touchdowns shouldn't count, right? True. If Calvin's doesn't count, why does Victor's count? That shouldn't have happened. You know what, Calvin's you on the You need to Lions. change that. You need to change that, Commissioner. Well, I'm the Commissioner. I should change that. But I'm saying, Goodell, let's, let's add Calvin's touchdowns to the list. We're looking at you, Goodell. That's right. We're looking right. at you. That's right. But, yeah, you look at this. Tony Romo, Marcus Colston, negative two Packers defense. Yeah. I mean, it was all around, uh, it was an up and down week. The guys who had the outstanding players, they totally delivered. And um, hopefully this, this upcoming week is going to be a better week. Hopefully. And if you, uh, if you guys want to stay tuned, we're going to go over next week's, or this week's matchups. We're going to let you know where the big points are coming from. So uh, stay tuned. Yeah. Hey, this is Mickey York from Fox Sports Detroit. When I want to get the inside scoop on local sports, I watch between Terminus or Fox Sports Detroit. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's week two of fantasy football. Let's get into some matchups. What do you say, Chris? You know what? What do you say? I say, let's do it. Let's get it on. All right. All right. We got, uh, we'll give you a rundown on some of the games we're going to go over. So we're going to go over the... The Manning boys, the Manning Bowl, big NFC West matchup, 49ers Seahawks. We got another NFC North matchup. We got Vikings versus Da Bears. Da Bears. And then we got um, the Steelers, another division rivalry game, Steelers Bengals. And then we can't leave these guys off, hometown Lions versus Cardinals. So let's get into that. Let's get into that first game. Yeah. Let's yeah. get into the the Manning Bowl. So we have Denver going to home of Super Bowl 48 yeah. to face little brother Eli Manning. What do you think is going to happen in this game, Chris? You know what? Based off last week, I think Peyton, older brother Manning, can take his same performance from last week into this next upcoming game. But you Seven know touchdowns? Seven. Seven. I mean, he might have, he might have four, but you know what? This Giants defense, I don't trust them. They've, they've always been known for their... Pretty much power ball, power running, power offense, and power defense. But okay. I don't, I don't like their defense this year. I think Denver is just too high powered. They're going to tear them apart. Well, I think, I think having it back in uh, in New York, I think that's going to bode well for the Giants. I think their, um, I think their offense does struggle. But if you see, if you just you give Eli the ball, he's going to make things happen. I know they they lost uh, Aaron Brown leg injury, and I know David Wilson's been having some fumbleitis issues. Mm, yeah. I heard they brought back uh, Brandon Jacobs. So it's going to be a little uh, different look on offense, but Peyton Manning and those Denver boys, they can't do that week, week in, week out. I think going up to New York, um, I think being a home opener out there, I think, I think Eli might, uh, might take this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put my money, I'm going to put it on Eli. You got big brother Peyton? I got Peyton, but, I mean, you never know. Eli does have more rings. That's right. Peyton had a great, great, great... Uh, Great week last week, but uh, let's go on to the to game number two of the matchup show. This is a uh, heavy hitters. These are the best quarterbacks in the league right now. Best quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. I don't know about that, but I'm they do have it. the. I think they do have the top two defenses. They got mobile quarterbacks. They got young quarterbacks. We're talking 49ers. We're talking Seahawks. We're talking potential NFC. Uh, championship game there so and these guys are division rivals so this is going to be a big True. week two key matchup 49ers at Seahawks what's your outlook you know considering that both the Seahawks and the 49ers have two if not the two best defenses in the league and two very mobile quarterbacks I'm really excited to see how this one's going to pan out I mean personally it's a free-for-all this one's a coin toss it could go either way I give Seattle's defense on my fantasy team, so I'm pulling for them. Like I, like I tell everyone else, when it's a coin flip, you got to go for the home team. But let me tell you another reason why I'm excited about this game. This game's Sunday night football, right? Sunday. Sunday night football. And who's – Faith Hill's not doing it no more. She's not doing that intro. No. We got Carrie. Yeah, we got Carrie. the young the young lady, Carrie. I know she's, she's doing her thing. I don't, know if, I don't know if you saw the opening. I think, I think she, needs to, she needs to bring it a little bit. 
a little bit more for the NBC. She was all over the place. I'm going to need a better introduction performance. But as far as the game, let's talk. I mean, what are we what are we doing here? We're talking fantasy football matches. Well, I'm getting I'm getting carried away with the Underwood stuff. But uh, <laughs> yes, I, I think I think the 49ers kind of uh, got away with one last week against Green Bay. I think True. I think their defense is uh, is rock solid. Mm -hmm. um, both these teams have a veteran running game too, uh, with Frank Gore, Marshawn Lynch. Again, I, I think it is, is a toss-up. I think um, Anquan Bolden's not going to have as many many plays as he had this past week, so I'm going to go Seahawks as well. But as far as weapons, though, if you look at Seattle, I mean, you have a somewhat injured Sidney Rice, and then you have Golden Tate. Yep. If you're looking at San Francisco, I mean, they really only have Vernon Davis, Crabtree out. Yep. Don't have Moss anymore. Those nope. were your n number one and two receivers last year. Yep. I mean, Kaepernick is losing weapons, An and it's more An the game's going on Anquan Bolden shoulder. showed he can. Uh, he still got it, though. But the thing is, is that going to be consistent weekly? That's, that's, that's what we'll find out. That's yeah. what we'll find out. I'm looking forward to this game. Uh, definitely looking forward to this game. And then uh, the next one, the black and blue division. Oh, yeah. We got the Vikes, the 0-1 Vikes going into Chicago to play the Bears. The Bears. Who, 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 who are you looking at this? You know what? I have the Bears. You know why? I'll tell you why. Adrian Peterson is the only thing that you have in Minnesota. And I'm saying that knowing the entire Vikings team right now. Because you don't have Percy Harvin anymore. You have Christian Ponder as your starting quarterback, which Christian Ponder is average at best against the Bears defense. And let's be honest right now, the Jared Allen defense, not doing so hot. I think that Jay Cutler, Brandon Marshall, Matt Forte, they're going to scorch him. Think no so? contest. No contest, Chicago. Brandon Marshall. So you're going to take Jay, Jay Cutler. Yep. And you're going over the, it sounds like, inexperienced Christian Ponder, mm -hmm. Cordell Patterson, mm -hmm. Greg Jennings, Kyle Rudolph, all Absolutely. those guys. Because let's be honest right now, even against the Lions, they said that the Vikings might win because they have Adrian Peterson. But when you're a one-dimensional offense with only one good player in Adrian Peterson, it's such an easy game plan on defense. And after that, it's offense versus the Chicago Bears defense. Da Bears, da Christian Bears. Ponder's not getting it done. I, I kind of agree. Plus, plus you're playing outdoors, Soldier Field. Who knows what the weather's going to be like. Vikings are used to that dome, that nice turf. That What have they got that temperature at, 70 degrees or something up there? Something so, like uh, that. Yeah, temperature. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the, with the Bears also. And then um, let's see our Monday night matchup. We have uh, the Steel Curtain Steelers against the Houdat Bengals. Apparently. The Houdat Hard Knock Bengals. Well, I mean, you have a young A.J. Green. You also have a young. Phenomenal. You also have a young and phenomenal Andy Dalton against an aging Pittsburgh defense. I mean, let's be honest right now. Pittsburgh, known for their defense, but they're not the Steel Curtain they once were. Troy Palomalu. Getting up there, their cornerback, their whole secondary in front eight. Questionable. Not, not doing that hot. Steelers also lost three starters this past week, all with season-ending injuries. Truth. So, uh, and then Isaac Redman, mm -hmm. he's not he's not doing it. So they brought back Jonathan Dwyer uh, to kind of solidify that that downhill run game. So yes, Steelers have a lot of problems going into this week. Not just this week, but going into the year. First, they lost um, Mike Wallace. Um, Antonio Brown is he gonna? Mm -hmm. He got paid. He went to a Pro Bowl. Ben Roethlisberger, him an Not offensive that coor hot. coordinator. So and like you said, the defense getting old. The Bengals, the new up and coming team, they have a top five defense. Geno Atkins is getting paid. Everyone else on the uh, their linebackers, Maluga, um, the guy from Arizona State's name uh, slips right now. Uh, Burfitt, yes. the corners are secondary. Offense. I mean, I, I, th I think this is a uh, this might be one of the the best no brainers we have going into week two. Um, so yeah, mark it down, mark it in your calendars. This is a lock, lock of the week, Monday night. Do lock. your other plans. What's on on Mondays? Pretty Little Liars. You you could go watch Pretty Little Liars if you want. Go watch Duck Dynasty. You don't even tune in Monday night. I, I'll give you the recap later. Uh, Bengals, Bengals big. And then the most anticipated week two matchup. Who we got? Who we got? We you got the, the birds versus the lions? What is this? Lion King? Akuta Matata? Wasn't there a little bird always chirping around Simba? 
Nine times out of ten, a lion's going to win that battle, Chris. Nine, uh, the, you're talking real lion versus a real bird? Yes. Not, not a football matchup? And matcho? football. And football. And I football. love it. I love you that. You know what? You know what? I'm calling it out, too. Lions are winning, and Lions are winning big. Megatron is actually going to show up for this next game, and he's not going to have his touchdowns called back. And Dominican Sue, not going to make bonehead mistakes. And you know what? Arizona defense, not that hot. Carson, against the Lions defense, I don't see him doing it. No? I see the Lions locking him down. You know what I like about this? I, the, the, game, the game's pretty and all, but 4 o'clock start. Mm. Four, I, I, I kind of like the 4 o'clock start. You go on through your day, you have breakfast, you have that, that mid-brunch, mm -hmm. get your chores done, mm -hmm. you know, check your fantasy score, see how you're doing. And then 4 o'clock comes, you, you relax. You put the Totino's pizza rolls in the oven. Totino's are good. You yeah. love them. And you wait, you wait for, that, for that kickoff. I'm, I'm loving the 4 o'clock game. I, I, I agree with you. I think our offense is, is, I think last week, I think Linehan held it back slightly. I think Kelvin's going to get more touches. I think uh, Nate Burleson stepped up huge last week, probably mm -hmm. the biggest game he's had with the Detroit Lions since he's been here. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Edwards. I think the tight ends. I earmuffs earmuffs for some of you at home, but I think Brandon Pettigrew. I I just if you Trading look what block. happened if you look what happened last week with the Arizona Cardinals and um, the way they attempted to try and stop the St. Louis Rams mm -hmm. tight ends, uh, case in point Jared Cook yeah went bananas. I just think with Kelvin on the with the outside, I think Reggie holding the linebackers and safeties in. I think it might not be Pettigrew. It might be the kid from uh, UCLA for you. It could be Chef. Mm -hmm. I just I, I think our tight ends are going to be able to expose those linebackers as secondaries. I think everyone's going to come up. I think we might get some uh, deep balls over the top. I'm looking for the Lions to have a big day also. I think Linehan's going to open up the book. I think Reggie's going to get his touches. I think Stafford, I think it's going to be a well-balanced game. I don't think Stafford's going to have to throw over 45 times. I, I hope not. I hope it's not a shootout because they got Carson Palmer on the other side also. True, true. But the thing is, regardless of Carson Palmer, you got to look at who, who's he throwing to. Name one receiver right now that's on Arizona. They got Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, he's... Besides Larry, who's, they, their, who's their number two receiver? They got uh, that brown kid. They got Michael Floyd, the kid from Notre Dame. They, Never heard they, of him. They have, they have some talent, but at the end of the day, I mean, players got to make plays. So if, it, if it's Carson Palmer making these guys better, then, then that's what's going to happen. I think Rashad Mendenhall going to Arizona also solidified that, that team so they're, they're not a pass-heavy first. So uh, Arizona's kind of similar to the Lions with their balance, and they, they do have a lot of playmakers. So um, I'm going to take the road team on this one. I'm going to take the road team this week. I'm which is the Lions. That, that, that is the Lions. So, yeah, let's, let's roll with the Lions this week and uh, get another W. Mm. And let's, let's, uh, let's stay on top of the uh, NFC North. Keep it rolling. That's what I'm saying. So uh, those are those matchups. Anything else you want to add with the matchups? Not any, really. Any, any, I other, think, any I other big uh, one you, you see out there that we, we might have overlooked? You know, I actually want to look at uh, who San Diego is playing. I think they're playing the Eagles, the San Diego Philly Philly Birds. San Diego against Philadelphia. You have in San Diego Ryan Matthews, who could be a sleeper. L great week last week, fantasy wise. Great week in the NFL, statistically wise. You look at a San Diego offense, Philip Rivers still doing it. You look at a questionable Philadelphia defense, Michael Vick. All right, let's be honest right now. They have that high-powered offense with Chip Kelly, but Against San Diego, I think they'll hold him down. I like the San Diego defense. You think San Diego's going to be able to keep up with Philly? San Diego will win the game. They, Philly ran, I think, I, 70 plays on offense, and they had, to, they had to dumb it down in that second half. Well, you know what? That's against a banged-up, injured Redskins team. Yeah. Redskins uh, defense, not that good either. I, I, li I like that matchup, and uh, I, li I like the sleeper pick, so... Segway, coming up next, stick around. We're going to have sleepers and the creepers, so stay tuned.
Welcome back to the Fantasy Football Show. You're hanging out with Chris and Chris. The saying, uh, what? Jump? Crisscross make you... Crisscross make you jump. Go. Chris is before misses. Chris, crisscross make you jump. We're going to get in. Right, we're going to get right into it. Sleepers and creepers this week. Sleeper. Sleeper number one, Kembrell Tompkins. Who's Kembrell Tompkins, you ask? Wide receiver, New England Patriots. Let me tell you why I got him on this list. Not just because Justin Hand Dog Hanning has him on his team, but we had some injuries. We had some big injuries happen to New England. Mm -hmm. And we all know about Hernandez, Gronkowski. Last week, Danny, Am uh, Danny Amendola mm -hmm. went down with a growing injury. He's doubtful. We also had Shane Vereen, mm -hmm. who was their leading uh, production guy last week, also go down, broken hand. So, uh, He's out for six weeks, so they're going to rely heavily on uh, Ken Kembrell this week. So uh, I got Kembrell as my, uh, my number one sleeper. And then uh, number two, he might not be known for uh, around the nation. I know he's known in, in the Detroit, Michigan area. We got Western, or Wayne State's own, yes, Joy sir. Bell. Um, Joy Bell. Joy Bell coming off a uh, two-touchdown game last week, but I think oh, a lot yeah. of it had to do with some overturned calls for, uh, for Mr. Reggie. So um, I think this week in Arizona, I think Scott Linehan's going to open up the playbook for uh, Mr. Joy, and uh, I think he's going to get a lot, a lot of touches. Plus, you got to have Joy Bell, because when you really have Reggie Bush, everyone knows Reggie Bush is coming. you got to have a solid backup. Joy Bell's that solid backup. And when you have other knucklehead running backs on your team, like... Mikel? Yep, like Mikel. Mikel LaShore, yeah. Mikel LaShore. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's pretty much gone. Pretty he much. Gone. But going on, so that, that's the two. Now we got our, uh, our creepers, those guys you just want to avoid as much as you can. Mike Wallace, one catch, four yards last week. He's already having uh, arguments with the coach. I think Tannehill's not 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 impressed with all that uh, money they they gave Mike. Not digging it. What they gave Mike Wallace. So Mike Wallace, you're wanted. You're wanted on the creepers. I don't think this is going to be your only week. But uh, you're being benched. Bench him. And then we got the the second guy on the list. I got him on my fantasy squads. Chris Johnson, Mr. Two uh, K yards back in the day, but mm -hmm. uh, he's he's going against Houston's run defense. It's going to be uh, tough for him to, you know, get any yards past line of scrimmage, flares in the backfield, anything like that. But he's just been contained, and I think with um, uh, Sean Green over there in um, Tennessee too, I think he's going to take away a lot of his uh, his goal line touches. Uh, oh yeah, oh, next yeah. week. So that's uh, that's my creepers. That's my sleepers and my creepers for this week. Um, that's pretty much all the show we have. Anything, That's all we got. Any further further notes for Mr. Chris? You know what? I think this Chris covered it. You think we got it all? I think we got it. Well, to all the uh, fantasy teams out there, to all the, the managers, to all the teams, to all the players, just want to say uh, good luck to you all. And on this day, 9-11, God bless uh, the United States. Go America. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.